are we moving to more of organic chemistry? What I always tell my children, for paper number two, you must always try to get 150 out of 150. Now this is because organic chemistry will always remain the same. A ketone will always be a ketone, an aldehyde will always be an aldehyde. You just need to know what you're looking at and you need to know the properties of each functional group and each homologous series. So for this question, question number two says, we've got letters A to E in the table below represent five organic compounds. Now, I'm gonna show you quickly, this is the diagram that we're given. Now I know we don't have a lot of time in the exam, we only have three hours, but you need to maximize that three hours. If you want, you can either take a pencil and then write quickly what is the functional group and the homologous a series that each a molecule is representing so that already when you're answering the questions, you have some sort of idea. Now some of us as well, if you're given this, the molecular formula, it's a bit difficult for us to actually visualize it. Like if you look at number B and you look at number D, so it would be better to actually draw it out to number A and C as well as number E. It would be much better to draw it. So what I would say quickly with a pencil right next to it, draw the actual structure, count the number of hydrogens and the oxygens so that you can also identify what the functional group and homologous series is. Because sometimes they can ask you about the isom of one and the other, but you haven't really counted how many there is, especially if you're not really good with your general formulas. So my advice to you when coming to a question like this, Always make sure everything is drawn out and then you can answer. So I'm given A, B, C, or D. Just quickly looking at it, I can see that number A is actually alkanes. There's only single chains, but I can see, aha, so this is HX. And then I can see number B has got an O. I haven't counted the C's or the H, but I'm already thinking alcohol, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, or an ester. Number C, if I put a line all the way to the middle, I can see on this side I've got an O, and on this side I've got an O, so already I'm thinking it is an ester, meaning that the left-hand side must have been my alcohol, which will then be my propanol. My right-hand side would have then been my carboxylic acid, which would have then been butanoic acid. D is penton 2 own own the name ending tells me it is a ketone. Its longest chain has got five carbons. Number E, longest chain is five. I can see on the fourth one, there's a side chain with methyl. And on the second carbon, I can see there's a triple bond. How do I know this? Because of the name ending of Y and E. Now, just quickly, in less than a minute, I've already now identified everything that I'm dealing with. So when I'm already answering the questions, I do have some sort of idea of what they're actually asking me and I know where to navigate. So let's look at the first question. It says, use the information in the table and answer the questions that follow. This is number 2.1. It says, for compound number D, I must write the homologous series in which it belongs. If I go quickly to number D, I can see I've identified number D. I can see the own there will tell me that this belongs to ketones. The functional group in which the homologous series which it belongs to will be a ketone. Number D, it says write down the IUPAC. So remember the IUPAC is a way in which we name for the functional isomer. So they're not looking for number D, the name was already given, but the functional isomer. I just wanna underline this one quickly. Remember, isomers means it's got the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens, however the structure differs a little bit. When they talk about functional isomers, it means that the functional group is still there. However, the structure differs a little bit. Now, most of the time, there's a various amount of ways in which you can have the name for the functional isomer. So the examiner's memo will have every option that you have. But please don't recreate something out of your mind. And obviously, we know that the properties of ketones means that an aldehyde must then be its isomer, right? So let's see. IUPAC name is a way in which we num or which we name. So the first one you could have said, it's a pentanol. It's pentanol because when we have a ketone, the functional group for a ketone is then an aldehyde. I'm also gonna make a star here. You could have had any of these options. You could have had 2.2. Remember to put the commas and the hyphens in the right places. Methyl propanol. And I can really see this is an aldehyde of mine. 
The another one you could have had was two methyl, methyl butanol. And another option that you could have had was three methyl. And as you can see, the numbers and the words are, sub are divided by a hyphen, whereas number and number is then separated by a comma. Methyl butanol. Remember, when we talk about isomers, same number of carbons and hydrogens, pent means five, prop is three with the, with the two methyls on the second one. That still gives me five. Butte is four. Meth is one. That gives me five. Butte is four. And meth is one. That still gives me five. So any of these options would have then be accepted by the examiner. Let's go to number 2.2. Now it says we must write down the IUPAC name of number A. Now remember, when we are naming homologous series, let me just erase this first. We follow a certain manner in which we name. First things first, you must always look at your longest chain. You must look at your side chains so that your side chains get the lowest number. And then another thing that you guys mostly forget is that your side chains must be always put in alphabetical order, right? Even though, even though B will come first or C will come first, but if, if you put in alphabetical order, then you guess actually get a mark for that. Also remember, your numbers are divided by commas and number and letter is then separated by a hyphen. You do get a mark for that. Otherwise, you're gonna get penalized. Let's see. I wanna see how many, how many marks was this question for? For IUPAC number, I don't know how many marks was this for. But most of the time, it's three marks. So then for that one, let's calculate the longest chain. Let me just go up again. Let's find our longest chain. I'm gonna have one. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can see this will have, this will take number two, number three, number four. If I count the other way, this will take number two, number three, lowest, these are the lowest, and then this one will be number five. I can see that on the third carbon and on the second carbon, I've got two of the same things. In chemistry, when two things look alike, we use the word die to indicate Right, if there were three, three, we could have said tetra and so forth, but you have to have that word. So, your final name would have been five, remember to always put it in alphabetical order, bromo, five bromo, on the second and on the third one, di means two, there's two of the same things, what are those things? They are methyls, they are called bronze, some teachers call it, call it the children that branch out so that it will be methyl. Our longest chain was six. Six is represented by the word hex. I only have single chains and my name ending will belong to the functional group of alkanes, meaning it only has an A and E. Now, most of the time, if you do draw or have to write out the name, if you feel like you are kind of sort of not sure whether it's correct, I would say quickly draw it and see if the drawing will represent what you're actually given. Because then if it doesn't, then you did make something wrong. But in this case, our IUPAC name for number one, for number A, will be 5-bromo, 2.3-dimethyl hexane. Let's look at number two. We must draw the structural formula of number E. The structural formula of number E. So let's see where number E is. Now let's investigate this. So if ever you're given the structural formula of something, always make sure that you first find your longest chain. My longest chain is pent, that means five. On the fourth carbon, I've got a branch of methyl. And on the second carbon, I've got something also going there which is a triple bond. This is a functional group of alkynes because it ends with Y and E. So let's go up and let us draw this structural formula. So I must also be careful whether they say structural formula or condensed structural formula and so forth. But the longest chain is five, which will be one, two, three, four, five. I did see that on my second carbon, one, two, I do have a triple bond there, which is one, two, and then on one, two, 
three on the fourth carbon, I've got a side chain, let me draw it there, of a methyl. Now remember, if there are no hydrogens, it's not correct. So please remember your hydrogens, you also don't wanna get penalized for not getting hydrogens. Another thing always remember when you're drawing the structural formula around the C, you must always have four lines. From grade 10, we learned that two, one line means two electrons. So one, two, three, four, it's two, four, six, eight. This means we followed the octet rule. This one will also be two, four, six, eight. That is also correct. Let's look at the third carbon, two, four, six, eight. That's also correct. This one, two, four, six. I am missing one, so I'm gonna put a hydrogen. For this one, I only have one, I'm missing three. Now it's got eight around it. This one has got two, four, six, eight. That is perfectly correct. I just need to put my hydrogens around it. And that is then my structural formula for compound number E. Let's look at number 2.3. Now we are told that compound B is a primary alcohol. Now remember, there are three types of alcohols that we get. We get a primary alcohol, we get a secondary alcohol, and we also get a tertiary alcohol. In this case, they're asking us about a primary alcohol, and they're asking that we must write down the meaning, right? Most of the time, they'll actually write you to write the sketch to represent a primary alcohol. In this case, they say write down the meaning for the term primary alcohol. So now, I just want to, before I explain this one, remember how we distinguish between primary, secondary, and tertiary is that we have the main carbon that is attached to the OH. If it's attached to only one other carbon, that's then a primary alcohol. If attached to two other carbons, it's secondary, and then three, it will then be tertiary. You are more than welcome to explain it to the examiner that we have a main carbon, and then that primary, secondary, and tertiary will then be determined by how many other carbons the main carbon is actually then attached to. It's actually much more easier if you were to maybe draw it somewhere and then explain it, but if you fully understand this concept, you're more than well to just go ahead with it. But writing down the meaning for primary alcohol, it is the C atom, um, which is bonded, which is bonded to the hydroxyl group. And that is bonded, and that is bonded to only one other C atom. Just for argument's sake here, if we've got the C atom bonded to OH, it means it's only bonded to one other C atom. This will then be our central carbon atom. So that is the C atom, which is bonded to the hydroxyl group, which is being the OH, bonded to only one other C atom. And this is the one that's in question. So that's what the examiner wanted. And this was for two marks, easy. Let's move over to the next question. Number 2.3 says compound B is a primary alcohol. So that's already been established. Compound B reacts with another organic compound, which is X, we don't know, to form compound C. All we have is number B, and we know that it reacts with C. Now we must write down the reaction that takes place. Now I don't know what X is, meaning I need to go back to my table. Remember, you cannot be a magician and bring up things that were not on the table. So let's see. We know that number C was formed and number B was used. Let's focus on number C. Number C is a product of two things that come together. We have alcohol and a carboxylic acid that will react to give us an ester and water. We already told that B is an alcohol. So that means compound number X, which is unknown, means that it must be a carboxylic acid. I know this because there's a double bond O that's bonded there. And for a carboxylic acid and an alcohol will then give me an ester. The first question for this one says, what type of reaction will take place? Let's go all the way down. Write down the type of reaction that will take place. This is esterification. Fication. So an alcohol and a carboxylic acid react 
we call esterification. Now they're telling us to write down the name for compound number X. Now I'm gonna go back here so I can show you, because remember, you must only use the table in which you're given. Let me just take all of this off. So if I put it in half, this would be my alcohol, and this would be my carboxylic acid. This is one, two, three, four. Four carbons is butte, and if this is a carboxylic acid, the name must end is oic acid as the name ending. Combining everything together will be butanoic acid, the number of carbons first, and then the name ending to identify the functional group in which it belongs to. So the unknown element X, which is the carboxylic acid that took place, will then be my butanoic acid. Butanoic acid. And this was for 12 marks. Easy peasy. What I always say, you cannot fail this question. The functional groups and homologous groups series will always be the same. What you need to know is actually look at the table or diagram that you're given and make sure that all your answers come from there. As you can see, all the answers that I've actually answered came from the table that I was given. There was nothing that I made up, nothing fabricated, and you should then get 12 out of 12.